I'm not gonna lie guys I don't know what I'm doing half the time but I just like do because it's there and it has to be done I actually woke up one day and I was just like you know what screw this man I'm going to the studio whatever happens happens my first song ever was the wackest song of my life like the beat goes on and I'm just like ah. <laughs> it gets crazy I'm actually gonna get deep into the story because my ex is mad I'm not gonna lie he really did cause me to like doubt myself a lot so i had no idea what in your performance it's having my feet but 2000 you can sit down for this one you can relax you can chill hey y'all what is good what is popping i'm out here you already know the name it's bad milk which you know cannot now you cannot sit me ever actually let me get comfortable because i've got a story time for y'all it's been a minute i know so you know the other day i was chilling about and reflecting actually this happened when i was praying which i was just like oh my goodness god thank you so much for everything that's happening in terms of my career like i i i, I never imagined for it to just be happening the way that it is you know so i figured I usually tell this information on like interviews and podcasts and stuff so I figured you know what let me actually do a story time about how I actually got into music so it's gonna be like a timeline situation because literally music's been around me all my life ever all right cool 5 March 1999 I was born I'm pretty sure there was a boom box or something because that's where the music bug bit me like I, I swear because it's just always been something that I've been into for some odd reason Okay, cool. So I was born in 99 and then When I started to see the world for it being the world and I understood that I'm in the world It happened that I was living in Soweto by my granny's house, right? So, you know every typical granny's house like you're gonna have your cousins you're gonna have your aunts you're gonna have your uncles you're gonna have your grandparents you know so that whole environment literally introduced me to like different genres so i'm gonna start with r b so at the time like my aunt was in high school you know and it sounds about like five five years old four five six somewhere there and my aunt like she was a big like certified lover girl there you know Obviously Drake wasn't a thing then but what I'm trying to say is she was like deeply into R&B like You know, especially when her and her boyfriend would fight like she'd blast Tamiya, she'd blast Aliyah, Destiny's Child, Brandy, you know the works So that's how I actually ultimately got exposed to R&B which okay Guti People get heartbroken and they can make songs about it and it's okay, you know and in the very same household my uncle happened to be like an artist himself he was like a rapper him and his friends had like a whole group and stuff so it was cool because they had a studio at home you know so in their bedroom they had like a locker where they put the mic in it was the booth <laughs> so they used it as like the booth and stuff so you know there'd be times where i go to like the studio in the house and i know Gucci, whenever there's a guy standing by the locker I gotta shut my trap because it's gonna pick up on this huge ass it was back in the day when people use those computers with the butts and like those big ass I forgot what they call it but it's like a box that you attach the computer to I think it's actually the computer anyway so yeah that's how I was like introduced to like hardcore old school hip-hop like your Tupac your Biggie your 50 Cent and so forth you know and okay I really didn't understand it as much but I knew Gucci there was something called rap you know and then when I started living with my parents soon after that, my parents are like very churchy. In fact, my, my, my family in general were all born again Christians. So that's how I got introduced to gospel and like, like even more, like I got to, like I got to en enjoy gospel live because at church, you know, like they'd be the lead and they'd be the choir. So I got interested like in all of that. That's why I realized, oh, it's, okay, there has to be a lead and there's sopranos, there's altos, there's certain parts that people, you know, sing and there's certain parts that they have to wait because others have to sing and so forth. So that's how I got into like gospel, not just local, but like international as well. You know, like your people like Hillsong, your people like Donnie McClurkin, you know, and I definitely like 
gospel is actually still one of my most like liked genres till this day because it's like i can't explain it you know so okay we fast forward a bit to maybe like i'm in grade five now and i have a nokia and my cousins and i have bluetooth so what happened was this one time i went to pumalanga to visit my cousin and he was like yeah pass your phone let me plug you with some music that's when drake had just dropped take care and i didn't know who drake was like i had no idea who drake was and you know the drive from pumalanga to Joburg is long had my earphones in yo i swear that was like one of the best road trips ever because like i got to hear drake like expressing himself like everything like you know like i know you know what it's like when you first what it was like rather when you first heard take care by drake like oh like that album touched me you know so that from that point going on my cousins and i discovered lil wayne we discovered who's this guy trey songs we discovered nelly we discovered all these other like like pre-2010 like hip-hop artists you know and for me like honestly i fell in love with hip-hop like in as much as i was exposed oh and my granddad used to listen to a lot of jazz like a lot of jazz it's just that i was young but it was like very interesting like i liked how you know vibey jazz is so i also enjoyed it so anyway as i was saying um i'm out here now I'm listening to hip hop, channel O is a thing, Trace is a thing. This was before MTV Base. My 2000, you can sit down for this one, you can relax, you can chill. So, yeah, we were li literally out there, you know. Every time we link up, it's a competition to see who knows which lyrics. This was back in the day, you couldn't even Google that. Whatever you heard, you'd have to write it down because it's like, hey man, this is what it sounded like, so I'm gonna write it down as that, you know. So that's how I was like introduced to like different genres of music. Like I had no idea. And as time went on, I got to learn that, okay, there's something called alternative. There's something called EDM, you know, for like different crowds in different spaces. So around like primary school, obviously, you know, young money, cash money were like the, the, the niggas that ran, that ran this ish, man. Like we, 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 you can't take it away from them. Like they actually built the cornerstone of who i currently am and i'm so grateful i might never meet Lil Wayne, Nicki minaj tiger drake all of them but wherever they are and if this ever comes across them i just want to say thank you because i would not be bad mook without them you know so but by the time i got to high school obviously you know you get exposed to like different people who like different things so i got exposed to like conscious rap like your tdes your pro errors okay i'm not sure if art future falls under conscious rap but that's when i got introduced to like you know like these t different type of groups who had like artists who were individuals you know um i also got introduced to like asap mob you know the pretty boys who can dress and i was just like okay i can live with this 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 is literally up my alley you know and okay locally at the time we were aka and we were ko no kiss but they were doing the things man like jay from 2008 to like 2016 17 for me music that's when i was just like yeah no somewhere somehow i'm gonna land up in this lane but I didn't always know Uguti, I'm gonna end up mu like making music and being a musician. Like it took a lot for me to realize. And this is where the, tr the story truly starts. So, okay, I'm in high school and stuff. Um, I used to chill with like a bunch of creatives, like in all aspects. I used to chill with gents that draw. Some of my friends would draw as well. Some would write. So I fell in love with writing poetry, like in primary school, like, like the dumbest things ever like i just thought you know what if i can make everything rhyme it's a poem and it's so crazy because like my english teachers always used to encourage me to carry on you know writing poetry i sucked though like i know for a fact that i sucked like i remember i once wrote this pe this this um <laughs> poem about a blind girl and i remember saying something i don't even know the color peach or see my mom smile at the beach I don't remember I was like probably in grade six you know so yeah like as I was chilling with like creatives you know people started to find themselves like people really started to find themselves but I was a bit shy you know and it's not that I was a bit shy but I was shy I'd say and I wasn't necessarily given the platform if you've ever been in like battle battle rap and cyphers you'll understand it's very cutthroat and if you don't fight for your spot you ain't gonna get it 
so basically like i just used to be the girl that would observe would say, okay when you go inside a cypher or when you go inside a battle rap you need to be very confident firstly you need to have practiced your freestyles if you're not good at taking it from the dome you need to have people that support you you know type thing and as time went by i was just like okay you know what maybe just maybe we can try this music thing out but unfortunately at the time i was dating someone who also was a musician at the time or was trying to figure it out and it was basically a situation where he wanted us to focus on his career more than mine and like this whole thing really did cla like cause like clashes between our relationship because I'm actually trying to figure myself out. He's actually trying to figure himself out, but he's not willing to support me and I was willing to support him type thing. Like, it gets crazy. I'm actually going to get deep into the story because my ex is mad. Anyway, so I actually woke up one day and I was just like, you know what? Screw this, man. I'm going to the studio. Whatever happens, happens. And I remember while well, at the time I was visiting my grandfather in Shawela, so it all. Did I not drag my ass all the way to Cosmo? Cosmo City, yes the one and only Cosmo eh, I remember it was a journey and a half to get there because this was pre Uber pre taxifier pre bulk pre in driver so like I didn't have the option to be like you know what let me request like I think I took like three taxis to go to the studio and it wasn't even a studio like that it was like in this niggas back room and it was like a small spot and it was just like so cramped up you know so okay the beat goes on and I'm just like ah <laughs> i'm just there like okay i'm really doing this and at the time like most of my friends hadn't started recording hadn't started recording yet and this actually caused big beef between my boyfriend at the time and i because i don't know man like if you've dated someone who's insecure you'll know that they don't like you going to places that they don't know anything about and being with people that they don't know so i'm not gonna lie he really did cause me to like doubt myself a lot because i was just like do i really want to do this am i being pressured do i have it in me am i actually talented you know and now i'm at the studio and this guy's blowing up my phone and if you like if you make music you're gonna know who see this thing is all about energy and vibes and if your energy is down and your vibes are down it's gonna show and you're gonna hear it in your song so i'm out there i'm so glad that the song i made for the first time in my life is somewhere in the earth floating i hope it never comes about because why my first song ever was the wackest song of my life like it sounded like i was terrified of the mic firstly like my words were muffled like it was bad so i told myself Iguti, you know what I'm gonna actually keep doing this until I get it right and if I'm gonna be honest it actually took me like because I started truly truly making music in 2017 so my first song I made it late 2016 it was trash I don't want to cap like it was trash and then in 2017 that's when I started to familiarize myself with like the studio setup you know the like the fact that when you like who's I'm saying performing <laughs> The fact that when you're recording you need the like you need to put in your all you know because i always used to ask myself Wuti, why do people on songs sound so like confident and everything and you know i got like i'm lucky to have been guided by people who had experience in the whole thing because wow darling it was not looking good for me you know so yeah around 2018 i moved all the way to durban i moved all the way to durban and that's why I told myself, Uguti, no matter what, nah, I'm actually going to do this. And I don't know how, but I'm going to do it. So I was very lucky to actually um, cross paths with a guy named Cham Tile. So Cham Tile was the person who first recorded me when I got to Durban. And he actually, he helped me so much in terms of like my confidence. He helped me in terms of my delivery, you know, like... As an artist, you need that person that's going to continually push you to dig out your true artist, you know. So, shout out to Champ for doing that for me. Because from that point on, like, that's where I learned, good. okay, I'm good at this, I'm bad at that. And in terms of writing, what works for me, and so forth, you know. So, 
yeah i actually started like recording more and more that's when i actually found myself working at skylight studios with a guy named p sign but when i met him he was not b and it's crazy how we met because i was supposed to do a voiceover for an ad and we just had such great chemistry like working chemistry so i figured you know what i'm just gonna make skylight my base studio because it's important to go to a studio that you're very comfortable in because if not like i'm telling you not you're gonna you're not gonna be happy you know with your outcome like you're really not gonna be happy happy with your with your outcome so yeah at that point like i was starting to visit the studio very regularly and i was telling myself you know what actually i'm gonna make this a hobby i made sure Guti, every week i'm in the studio working on something or fixing something that i had already worked on you know so somewhere along the lines of 2018 um there's a girl in my class there she was like okay you have experience in hosting events let's host an event you know so i was like okay i'm okay with that but if we do host an event i have to perform it only makes sense mind you i hadn't gotten used to performing yet because i used to be like an mc like how like hostess type thing so actually performing and emceeing are two very different things like it's two different like spheres spheres rather <laughs> spheres of like you know so it was just like the whole the whole transition from being an MC into being an artist was like definitely uh it wasn't too hard because already i had my way around the mic i had crowd control and stuff you know so yeah the first event that i ever performed at was my own event and it's so crazy for some odd reason i like i never went to check the venue out yeah well so yeah i took out my share she took out her share and our third partner took out her share so we could get the venue now the story gets sour because <laughs> i get there we like we were initially supposed to get the money for the door but then the owner of the venue is telling us nah his regulars refused to pay and i told myself i was like you know what i don't care about all these stories i have to perform because i'm prepared like i'm doing this no matter what if i could tell y'all where it was like it was at this um <laughs> it was at a tavern because I hadn't went to go check the venue, remember? So I had no idea what's in your performance. It's having my feet. So I get to the tavern. You can see the regulars are finished. They are slushed. They're sleeping everywhere. And at the time, I probably had two songs that were ready, which was China. And I don't remember the other one, you know? So yeah, like, and as nervous and like scared I as I was, like, I had great support from, like, my friend because she was just like to me, you know what, you can actually do this. Don't think about the venue situation too much. Don't think about anything. And I believe, like, I killed it, you know, because it's my song. So, obviously, like, I know what I have to deliver. So, from that point on, I'm not going to lie. I've probably done over, like, 200 shows since, yeah, well, in the space of four years. Nah, maybe I'm exaggerating. 200, tomorrow. You could find out because sometimes in a week I can do up to like five, six shows. So it happens. So yeah, from that point on, like I started to get my name out there as an artist. You know, like I got to, I started like attending a lot of events in Durban. Like there was this event called the social market that we used to do every Sunday. And I happened to always MC there, you know. But it also helped me because I got to meet other artists who exposed me to other artists who exposed me to other artists. So what I like about this industry sometimes is the fact that it has this super, super domino effect that you need to be out there. Because when you're not, you don't meet people. And when you don't meet people, you don't make progress and you don't make connects in your career. So that was basically what I realized was, okay, if I really want to make this thing work, I just have to, you know, carry on with it. And yeah, I eventually like signed to like a record label, you know, for a year. We pushed stuff. I ended up dropping an EP called Flavors. Oh my gosh, dropping Flavors was such a disaster because initially I was supposed to drop like six tracks. But like my tracks weren't ready and I learned there Guti, it's important to not announce until you are fully ready, you know. And there I was, yo, it was just such a mess actually. But like the show had to go on, you know. So flavors actually dropped when I was doing an yeah, I was doing a radio interview. Like it was November 29th, if I remember well, 2019. Yeah, I was or 2018 between the two. I was doing an interview at a radio station and I know my, my EP just dropped and I'm worried. I'm just like, oh my God, like, are people listening to it? 
because I knew after my event, after, sorry, after that interview, I had to come back to Joburg because, like, it was, like, end of holidays. That's yeah, beginning of holidays, rather. And I won't lie, like, you know, for my first EP, I actually did quite good. Like, it wasn't too bad. I had decent features. But I think I also had too much features because, like, you know, constructive criticism helps. Like, people highlighted to me, which, okay, it's dope, but we need to hear more of yourself. Like, we need to understand you before your features. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to take note from that, you know. So, I'm not the type of artist that drops, like, a lot because i take a lot in preparing for drops but this year it all changes you know so i don't know man i'm not gonna lie guys i don't know what i'm doing half the time but i just like do because it's there and it has to be done you know so a lot of the time people come to me and they ask for advice like how do you do this how do you do that literally i just tell them Muti, just make sure you prioritize your mental health and just like your over like your overall wholesome health before anything because this industry is very taxing you know what i'm saying like because breaking out is very hard and i feel like over the years i've just learned Uti, okay maybe it's easier when you work at your own pace and you're at your own time because at this point i've realized Uti, Direction is more important than speed. I okay. I see people doing the most, you know and stuff and That's them. That's their lane and their timing and I'm focused on me You know life is a freeway. So you just got to focus on your own lane You'll see yourself crossing bridges. You'll see yourself crossing etals But as long as you are on your own lane and at your own pace and you've got like good support I'm telling you like it's crazy and i'm blessed in terms of support because my family like actually rocks with me i remember the other time i actually took my mom to a show and she was there she was rocking my little brother was there so you know it means a lot because not a lot of people i know family support their music career because you know growing up as a black person parents tend to like discourage us to not take the arts route but for me it's something i could not not do you know what i'm saying like even if i woke up and i'm like okay let me go get a corporate job I can't like it's it's not for me like I, I I need to live the life of a rock star Do you understand what I'm saying like I need to find myself in like at least five spaces in a week with different creatives because ultimately I'm like a networking hotspot you know like a lot of people come to me for stuff for me to go to other people for them type thing so that at a job Mm -mm, it doesn't really work you know so yeah guys that's just basically how i got into music and i think i'm doing good because like my my accolades are growing bro like we're working with real people i'm sure you guys have seen me on tv here and there doing the things i've met a lot of like amazing artists who are established you know and i always ask for advice not pictures advice I don't know i just have something against taking pictures with like famous people that's just me like i'm so sorry but i'm not <laughs> so yeah guys that's just like you know till this point my journey of how i've gotten into music and i'm not gonna lie like i'm having fun like i'm having so much fun like because there's gonna get to a point where i'm not having fun it's just work 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 so you know i just always take the moment to like savor i always take the moment to look around and be like okay this is really me and i'm really doing this and i'm really at this place you know in fact like i gotta brag a bit this this friday i'm opening up for nasty c so if that don't mean progress i do not know anymore that's all i gotta say I'm probably gonna do like an updated version where I tell you guys what I've actually done and achieved so far. So shout out for everyone who's actually watched this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Smash that notification bell, smash that like, hit a comment. If you like have any questions for me, don't forget to ask. Like I'm always free to like answer and guide where I can. I don't know everything, but I'm kind of clued up in all of this. Don't forget to follow me on all my socials. I'm gonna drop it in the description box. Kodak out now. You better stream it because my next song title Voodoo is coming soon. Otherwise, from your favorite milk of them all, I am out.